everyone. A few years ago, in one of his talks to priests, the late St. John Paul II cautioned priests not to become so immersed in the work of the Lord that they forget the Lord of the work. The spiritual life is as much about taking time out to be with the Lord in private prayer and meditation as it is about performing works of charity, which of course are very good in themselves, but not the full picture. School children these days are taught how to raise money for good causes. The Good Shepherd Fund is a good example. This should be balanced, however, with teaching them how to imbibe the Word of God in the classroom through reflective reading of Scripture, followed by prayer and silence, so that they can get to know the Lord in a personal way. This will, in turn, enhance their participation in the Mass and help them participate in it at a deeper level. The first reading from Samuel also brings out this same point when he said, Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. So listening to the Lord in prayer as is as important as speaking or acting. How easy it is to twist Samuel's words around and say, Listen, Lord, your servant is speaking. Saint Mother Teresa of Calcutta always insisted that our nuns must spend an hour in prayer each morning before they visit the poorest of the poor. Otherwise, they may not see Christ in these needy people. Or they might just end up as being glorified social workers. The Gospel today is the story of the Lord calling the first apostles. However, before he did this, the scriptures tells us that he spent the whole previous night in prayerful dialogue with his father. Activism, or being overly active, can be a stumbling block to growth in the life of the spirit, and yet it is prized highly by the world. In the Old Testament, for instance, Pharaoh, who enslaved the Israelites, instructed his slave drivers and he said, Make these slaves work harder so that they have no time to listen. No time to listen to God or to Moses, who actually intends to free them. If we listen to the Lord, we will know what to do and when to do it. What do we read in today's psalm? You do not ask for sacrifice and offerings but an open ear, which is coupled with, Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. It seems to suggest that listening with the heart is a vital first step to entrusting our whole selves into his hands and doing his will. So let us open our ears and hearts more earnestly to the Lord so that He can, we can be his trusted disciples like Samuel, say with confidence, Here I am, Lord, your servant is listening. I am now ready to do your will. Now, here are a few questions you might consider. First, do we need to teach children these days how to cultivate an inner silence or stillness amid the noise and din of the world? Scripture says, Be still, and know that I am God. Second, charity work is to be lauded, but is there a danger that we will reduce the Christian faith to raising money for the poor, to justice and peace issues, and forget about the contemplative side of our faith, without which charity work can be just another form of ego tripping? Third, Vatican II documents say that Christ is present in his word. Do we treat it with the same reverence as the Eucharistic species where Christ is also present? Are we still treating the first part of the Mass, that is the liturgy of the word, as less important than the second? Lastly, what does it mean for you and me to listen with the heart.
good questions, these. How would you answer them? Thank you all for listening, and God bless you all. Oh.